Shalom. On this penultimate day of the Easter octave, I would like us to reflect on threats to Christianity. Our verse for the day is Acts chapter 4 verse 17. But to stop the whole thing from spreading any further among the people, let us threaten them against ever speaking to anyone in this name again. After Peter and John had healed a cripple who usually sat at the gate called Beautiful to Beg, the attention of many people who went to the temple to worship was drawn to the apostles. Like on the day of Pentecost, Peter seized the opportunity to catechize his fellow Jews, explaining to them that Jesus the Nazarene who has risen from the dead is the reason for all the wonders that the apostles were performing. Many people came to believe and the number of believers grew. This made the Sanhedrin uncomfortable. They presumed the death of Jesus will give them respite. Yet here are those who were with Jesus doing exactly what Jesus did, teaching with authority. They were worried as to how uneducated ordinary people could be bold to speak and perform wonders. Since they had no explanation to give as to what is happening, and since they were not ready to acknowledge their mistake in rejecting Jesus, they opted for the easy option, silence the apostles. If the apostles stopped speaking in the name of Jesus, miracles would not happen and people would not be enticed to follow Jesus. This attitude of the Sanhedrin is similar to the cancel culture of our generation. Cancel culture is a form of taking away the public voice of an individual who is deemed to have spoken improperly. The purpose of ostracizing a person online, on social media or in person is geared towards denying the person the ability to speak. This is exactly what the Sanhedrin did with the warning they gave the apostles. Don't ever speak in that name again, else your lives will be in danger. The verb apeleo, translated as threat, expresses an intention to harm someone if a condition is not met. How many times have inhuman and unchristian ideologues tried to silence Christian, the Christian message and its values? In Nigeria, for instance, a country that claims to be a secular state, there are places where churches cannot be built and a Christian preacher will risk his life if he dares to preach. Also, why is it possible for some people to speak as they so wish but others cannot? For example, President Donald Trump is removed from Twitter for reasons that his tweets instigated violence. On the other hand, some world leaders like the Ayatollah of Iran have threatened people on Twitter and yet they still maintain their accounts. When a voice is not the expected voice, it is silenced. The Christian voice was not the expected voice and the Sanhedrin tried to silence it. But as Peter told them, you must judge whether in God's eyes it is right to listen to you and not to God. The struggle to silence the Christian voice is a struggle to kill the Christian faith because faith comes from what is heard and what is heard comes through the word of Christ. Romans 10, 17 As for us Christians, we ought not to be silent. We have to keep speaking in the name of Jesus that faith might be instilled in people. If we don't, the stones may replace us. When the Pharisees asked Jesus to rebuke his disciples as a son Hosanna and acclaimed him to be the king who is to come, Jesus retorted, I tell you, if they keep silent, the stones will cry out. Luke 19.40 May the elements of nature never replace us as having just of the truth through Christ our Lord. And may Jesus empower our speech in his name and ignite in people the fire of his love, leading them to conversion. Amen.